Hey everybody, it's Steve Schmid here again, owner of Simple Pump Company. Uh, today I'd like to talk about pumping into pressure. I think you probably see that on a lot of our documentation. So I want to kind of explain what that is and, and how you use our pump to do it. Uh, if you have a well, most likely you have a pressure tank. Uh, that pressure tank is going to range from size uh, either really small or, or pretty large, almost you know, as tall as me and, and, and pretty wide around. Um, and what that's for is that when your, your pump actually pumps the water, uh, you can't compress water. So you have to create pressure using some other median. And that, in most cases in a pressure tank, is a bladder. So it's an air bladder because you can compress air. So uh, the tank will actually fill up with water and it starts to compress that bladder. And as that bladder compresses, that's what creates the pressure so that you can run it through your home plumbing. Um, now, the nice thing about using a hand pump to fill that is that if you need to flush the toilets, if you want to wash dishes, if you want to take a quick shower, you can use your hand pump to fill up that tank and then go use those things like you normally would. Um, so that, that's really the benefit to using a hand pump to filling up your pressure tank or to pumping into pressure. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is that you know, you're moving anywhere from 4 to 20 fluid ounces with the hand pump. So it can take a while to fill up that tank, depending on the size of it. Uh, we do suggest that you use a larger tank uh, so that you're not going back and forth and pumping multiple times. The larger the tank, uh, the more volume you have in the tank uh, for use once it's at pressure. Uh, if you have a really small, they call them kicker tanks, they're you know, generally about this big. Usually that means that you have a variable speed pump or a constant pressure pump uh, that will uh, provide pressure when you need it. Uh, and, and that kicker tank is really just to absorb the, the start and stop of the, of the actual pump itself. But it doesn't hold much volume. So uh, you, you almost wouldn't even be able to flush your toilets if you have that small of a, of a tank. Um, so when, when, when using a hand pump to fill the tank, we suggest you get as big as you can so that you can create as much reserve to do as much as you can with the water. Um, so with that being said, we do use a pressure tank here when we do our testing with our test system. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of give you a sense of, of what you get out of pumping that pressure. Uh, it'll just take a second here, uh, but you can see we've got a pretty small pressure tank just that you know we're using it for testing so we want to be able to to simulate an increase in pressure uh, and then the the outflow of that pressure like you would in a normal plumbing system uh, we've got just our test system with the 100s it's it's connected to our uh, our drive system here because obviously we don't want to have to hand pump it uh, when we're doing testing which is is throughout the day uh, but what we'll do is we'll show you that uh, this system sitting right about 40 psi right now uh, will be set up to release at about 65 uh, through this pressure relief valve. Uh, and when it releases, what you'll see is there'll be a flush of water through here. And that, if you think about it in, in terms of this discussion and what you'll see, that would be like turning on the faucet or turning on the shower. Uh, obviously, we're flowing a bit more water than what you would in those situations, but it'll kind of give you a sense for building up that pressure and building up that volume of water. So as this starts to fill up, uh, you're gonna see that pressure start to rise. Uh, and it's typically not linear. So uh, the, you, you'll have a lot larger amount of volume when you go from 20 to 30 pounds than you will going from 40 to 50 pounds. Uh, it's just the way, it depends on the way that the, the design of the actual pressure tank that you have. Um, so while, while this is, is filling up, I want to discuss the fact that we have two types of pumps, which you've probably seen in our other videos or on our website. We have a, a shallow well pump, which is a suction pump, so it sucks the water up, and a deep well hand pump, which lifts or pushes the water up. Um, the ability to pump into pressure is the same on both of those systems. Uh, so they, they both would connect in that pressure tank. They both have the ability to, to fill up that tank uh, for use within the home. Um, and while again, while that's filling up, what I'll do too is, is bring in this setup here. So this is our check valve and gauge kit. Uh, here's the check valve. You can see the, there's an arrow pointing what direction the water needs to flow. Uh, and the pressure, valve, uh, pressure uh, gauge here is just to 
allow you reference when you're pumping to see where you're at so you don't overpressurize your tank. But what this check valve does is, you know, in most cases you have a, a weep hole and you're pumping. And as that pressure grows, if there's back pressure on it, it's going to push more water and more loss through that weep hole. But if you pump the water up and you push it past this check valve, now there's no back pressure other than what's in the pipe itself back on the pump. Uh, so this is definitely necessary if you want to pump into pressure. Uh, and that's for both the uh, suction pump as well as for the uh, deep well hand pump. Um, so this is a component that when you ask for a quote, if you say you want to pump into pressure, this will be quoted. Uh, and it's definitely necessary. Even if you're filling a tank that, that goes through a hose, but it's, it's got a vertical lift of 10 feet or more, you're going to want one of these because of that back pressure. Um, you can see here that now we started at 40 and we're, we're coming up on 60 pounds. Um, an interesting thing to talk about as this goes is that this pressure allows us to simulate depth. So two point, one, one PSI of pressure is equivalent to 2.31 feet of lift. So by us getting up to 60 PSI with this, we're actually simulating what it is like to lift from 120 foot plus water level. Uh, which really allows us to work on, you know, what are, what's our seal life? You know, what are the, the levels that our, our drive systems can go? So, it, you know, it gives us an ability to show you guys something, but also to really test our stuff and, and see what kind of lifing we can expect out of the system. Uh, okay, it's getting pretty high here. Pretty soon you're going to hear a change in, in sound, and then a bunch of water is going to flush through this system right here. Here it comes. That's the valve opening. Now you can see that pressure. So that water is all the water we've pumped and it's continuing to go, continuing to go. That pressure is still 60, it's down to 57, 58. So it's dropping, but that water is still getting pushed through. Eventually this pressure relief valve will close to allow for our test system. But you can see what I'm mentioning is that you're basically reserving that water and it's becoming pressurized so that you can use it in your system. Okay, so I think that explains why we would wanna do that and use that, uh, have that feature with the hand pump. Um, let me turn off the system here. All right, so the next thing we wanna talk about is how do you connect? Uh, and, and how do you get from your hand pump to your actual pressure tank? Um, and there's a couple different ways you can do that, and it's going to be different depending on where you live. You know, if it doesn't freeze, uh, if it does freeze, typically, and let's, let's talk about areas where it freezes. And, and in those cases, usually your system is on a pitless adapter. Uh, so you're going to obviously be on a casing like this here. There's going to be nothing coming out of the top, um, and your, your water line's actually routed underground. Um, in those cases, your, your well is outside and then your pressure tank is in a pump house, in the garage, in the basement, somewhere that's, that's climate controlled because all that water needs to be kept warm because if it freezes, then it, it could break the pipes um, because water obviously expands when it freezes. Uh, so in that situation, the most common way to connect uh, is either through a yard hydrant. So there's what's called a frost-free hydrant and we'll show you a picture here of what that looks like. And what that does is, is connects into your submersible line somewhere out in your yard. A lot of times it's actually close to your wellhead. Uh, and you know, if you wanna have one put in, you can have a well professional do that as well. Uh, but when you have that yard hydrant, all you've gotta do when you wanna pump into pressure is you connect to the simple pump with a hose, and then you connect the other side of the hose to that hydrant, and you open the hydrant. You've now created a line into your into your pressure system and then at that point you're going to just pump the hand pump uh, and then watch your pressure gauge and in most cases because of that weep hole even though the the check valve allows most of that water to come out you're really fighting some loss after about 45 psi so you can expect to get about 45 to 50 psi uh, assuming again that your your total lift does not exceed what the capability of the pump is. Uh, and I'll talk about that at the end. 
Um, but you would just connect that hose, you would pump what you needed to pump, power comes back on, you disconnect everything, turn everything off, go back to your normal system. Uh, we do suggest that when you do make that connection that you do go off and, and turn the breaker off on your submersible pump because you don't want to have that open, all these lines connected and have the power come back on and your pump turn back on and you know push just it, it puts undue pressure on the system that's not necessary so just from a procedure perspective that's what we suggest uh, so again you go in you turn off the breaker to your pump and then you're going to connect your hose from here to that hydrant you're going to open the hydrant and you're just going to start pumping um, if you don't have a hydrant and maybe your well is is close to your home and there's a spigot that's on the outside of the house in many cases that can be used Sometimes it can't if it's anti-siphon. Anti-siphon is set up such that it only water only flows in one direction and you're not able to go in. Usually you can read it on the, on the, you know, the spigot to, to see if it is anti-siphon or not. Um, and in some cases, you're, you're, you might be just outside of a well house or just outside of the, a door that's down where your garage is. And in that case, you can actually go from the pump, from this, this check valve and gauge kit, with a hose in through the door and connect to the spigot that's on your pressure tank. Uh, and we'll show you an example of, of what that looks like uh, in, in the video as well. Um, sometimes you can go direct to that spot because usually this is a temporary thing. So if you've got to do it for a day uh, or half a day, it, it, it's not too big of a deal to have that hose run and then maybe disconnect it when you're not using it. Um, but in that scenario, typically that's the, the best way to connect. Uh, if those things aren't available, if those methods aren't available, uh, you could always have a frost-free hydrant installed on your submersible line. Uh, that will come with some additional cost, but any well professional can do that or, or a plumber can do that as well. Um, okay, so that's with a pitless adapter. So if you have a situation where you live in an area that doesn't freeze and your submersible comes up through the cap, usually in those cases, the well and your pressure tank are in a very close quarters to each other. Usually they're in a similar area. Uh, so it's very easy because you've got the spigot on your pressure tank that could be you know, very close to your actual uh, wellhead and you can just run that hose there, open, you know, turn off the, the breaker to your pump, open up the, the spigot and then start pumping. Uh, a, lot of our, a lot of our actual dealers will, in those situations, will actually hard plumb, they'll actually run plumbing directly into that submersible line with a spigot right here so that it's always connected and you can always connect into your pressure tank and then just open this spigot if you want to get water from the hand pump uh, right here out at the open. Uh, so th there's a couple of different ways in which you can connect in. Uh, again, with the, the suction pump, it also allows for that. And in most cases, the suction pump is a wall mount near the pressure tank because you're pulling water through that submersible line. So it's very similar in, in how you connect it to uh, a situation where you're in an area that doesn't freeze. Um, so there, there's a, a quick overview of how you would connect into pressure and why you would want to connect into pressure. Uh, we got to keep in mind that connecting into pressure, like we talked about, is 2.31 feet per one PSI. Uh, so if you're going to try and, you know, pressurize up to 45 PSI, that's pretty close to 100 feet. Uh, so if your static water level is 200 and you're trying to pump into pressure, your total lift is now 300. Uh, and our, our smallest pumping cylinder goes to 325. So if you're going to pump into pressure, you want to keep that in mind when deciding which uh, cylinder you want to have. Uh, and if you give us that information ahead of time when you answer the quote form, then we'll actually size that out for you so that we make sure you get the right one uh, and that you're not overstressing the system. Um, so there you go. There's, there's the, the rundown on pumping into pressure. If you have any questions, obviously just give us a call, send us a note uh, through our website uh, and, and we'll, we'll clear up any questions that you do have. Uh, thanks for your time. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll talk to you again soon.